Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in for yet another Where Are You Wednesday. Um, today's video, you know, remember that thing actually the other day I said about maybe coming on here and not looking like a total dumpster fire one day? Well, unfortunately, today's not the day for that. Um, so <laughs> here we are. But in my defense, I'm in like my gym clothes. I'm going to be working out when I'm done with this video. So at least I have a reason today other than um, just not, you know, just feeling kind of lazy. But it's fine. We'll get through it. I don't know why. It's like the lighting here for some reason is just so crappy. It's a really, really icky day out here. It's super cold, super windy, super rainy. So I can't open the blind because then there's like no sun. Anyway, but whatever. We're going to get through it. I keep messing with everything to hope in hopes that it makes it better. And I just think it makes it worse. So maybe I should stop. <laughs> but anyway, today's story is going to be said in Indiana. Lauren Spearer has been missing since 2011. So anyway, without any further ado, let me quit rambling about nonsense and get into the video. Cue the intro. Lauren Spearer was born on January 17, 1991. She was 20 years old when she disappeared on June 3rd, 2011. At the making of this video, she's been missing for over 10 years. Lauren was born to a mom named Charlene and a dad named Robert, and Robert was an accountant. She grew up in a wealthy part of Westchester County called Scarsdale in New York. Lauren graduated from Edgemont High School in 2009. Shortly thereafter, she enrolled in Indiana University. She was very active in the Jewish community at the university, and she even went to Israel on behalf of the Jewish National Fund. She met a boy who eventually became her boyfriend, and his name was Jesse Wolf. She also met another boy named Jay Rosenbaum at Camp Tawanda, which was a summer camp in the mountain town of Honesdale, Pennsylvania. And she even met more students who eventually became part of her circle at the university. June 3rd, 2011. Lauren, at age 20, disappeared after a night of hard drinking. Her boyfriend, Jesse Wolf, actually didn't go out with her and her friends that night. He stayed home and was texting with Lauren throughout the night before he went to bed. On the night she went missing, several people said Lauren was extremely inebriated. The Bloomington Police Department was able to get footage and witness statements, and they were able to piece together a timeline of events that led up to Lauren disappearing. Friday, June 3rd, 12.30 a.m. Witness statements confirm that Lauren left her apartment with a friend named David Ron. From there, she met up with another friend named Jay Rosenbaum at his house, and then another person who also joined them, which turned out to be a neighbor of Jay Rosenbaum, Corey Rossman. 1.46 a.m. Lauren is seen going to a bar called Kilroy Sports Bar. 2.27 a.m. Lauren leaves Kilroy's with Corey Rossman. Her phone and shoes were left at the bar because Lauren actually took off her shoes to go into the sand-covered patio outside of the bar. 2.30 a.m. Lauren enters the Smallwood Plaza Apartments where she lives. A man named Zach Oakes saw how drunk Lauren was and he asked if she was okay. 2.48 a.m. Lauren left the apartments and went into an alley between College Avenue and Morton Street. Then three minutes later, she's seen on camera leaving the alley and she walks towards an empty lot. Lauren's keys and purse were found between the areas also. Not long after, Lauren and Corey got to his apartment where they ran into his roommate, Michael Beth. Corey was drunk and stumbling and actually got sick on the carpet as he was going up the stairs. Michael Beth said he helped get Corey to bed. He said he also tried to get Lauren to stay at their apartment for her safety. Lauren supposedly wanted to go back home to her own place. 3.30 a.m. Michael said he called Jay Rosenbaum because he said he wanted Jay to take care of her. Michael also said Lauren was also trying to get him to continue drinking at her place. Lauren eventually went to Corey's and he noticed that she had a bruise under her eye. Lauren said she didn't know how she got it. 
It was assumed that she got the black eye from a fall from earlier in the evening. Two calls were made from Jay Rosenbaum's cell phone, and Lauren supposedly made both calls. One was made to David Ron, and the other to another friend. However, neither friend answered, and Lauren didn't leave a message. At 4.30 a.m., Jay Rosenbaum said Lauren left the apartment, and that was the last time Lauren was seen. She was again walking towards the intersection of 11th Street and College Avenue and was going south on College Avenue. At the time of her disappearance, Lauren was barefoot. She had on black leggings and a white t-shirt. A few hours later, Jesse Wolf, Lauren's boyfriend, tried to get a hold of her. He called her cell phone and actually an employee at Kilroy Sports Bar answered. From there, Jesse Wolf filed a missing persons police report and reported her missing. In August of 2011, the police did a nine day search of a landfill called Sycamore Ridge Landfill in a city called Pimento for clues in Lauren's disappearance. It was important for the police department to look there because the trash from Bloomington is taken there. So any evidence that they might've been able to find, they thought maybe they could find it at the landfill. Maybe somebody threw something away and they thought they'd be able to find it. The Bloomington Police Department, the FBI, and the Indiana University Police Department all helped in the search for Lauren. There has been over 3,000 tips given in the disappearance of Lauren Spearer as of 2014. 100 of them had actually been received during the beginning of 2013. In April of 2015, Bloomington Police Department said that they were actually investigating a possible link between Lauren Spears disappearance and the disappearance and eventual murder of another student named Hannah Wilson. Hannah Wilson went missing on April 24th, 2015, after she went to Kilroy Sports Bar, the same bar that Lauren had attended the night that she went missing. Hannah left the bar and got into a cab. Her body was found the next day and it was found in Brown County. A man named Daniel Messel was eventually arrested for Hannah's murder and his cell phone was found near her body. It was actually found at the bottom of her body, like it, towards her feet. A few months later, in July of the same year, it was determined, however, that Lauren's disappearance and Hannah's murder are not linked and that any evidence that may seem like they link to each other is purely coincidental. Five years later, in January 2016, the FBI and another police agency investigated a property in the 2900 block of Old Morgantown in Martinsville. Martinsville is a town that is about 20 miles north of Bloomington. The FBI released a statement that said that they were going to be following up on leads that were given and linked them to a man named Justin Wagers. Justin Wagers lived with his mom and stepdad, and he had actually been arrested for exposing himself to numerous women in the area. Cadaver dogs were used to search the property, and apparently they hinted towards evidence there. From there, they hired anthropologists who came and dug up the yard and sifted through the dirt to see what they could find. And they searched in the area where the dogs picked up a scent. However, nothing was found. Justin Wagers, had a white truck and that was actually taken also and was towed by the investigators. Lauren's disappearance has a ton of theories. So from here on in the video, we are going to be touching on a lot of allegations and I just want to make it apparent and abundantly clear that these are all just allegations. These are things that I have read um, in different articles and I'm no way accusing anybody of anything. Um, this is just everything that I had read. Lauren's disappearance has had a ton of theories. Lauren's parents, Charlene and Robert, actually don't think that their daughter's alive anymore. They think that she's dead. And they also think that she was possibly drugged because of the state of her condition that night that she went missing, how inebriated she was. They think that maybe somebody at the bar actually slipped her something when she wasn't looking. Um, and from there, it just kind of made her condition worse. Her family has also been very vocal about her guy friends that she was with that night, as well as Jesse Wolf her boyfriend, who didn't go out with him that night. The group of men refused to take a police-given polygraph test, and they lawyered up, like, right away after 
uh, Lawrence's appearance and they haven't made any direct accusations towards the guys but they think that at least two of them know a lot more than they are letting on. The group of boys said that they've taken private polygraph tests and one was from the FBI. They said that they are not trusting of the Bloomington Police Department. That's why they loaded it up so quickly after Lauren going missing. Lauren's friends and Jesse Wolf said that Lauren used drugs and alcohol on the night of her disappearance. Jesse's mom also made allegations about Lauren having a substance abuse problem. Um, and she said that she was actually asked to leave the summer camp where she had met Jesse Wolf and Jay Rosenbaum and her group of friends. She that's where you know she met them at summer camp, and his mom supposedly said that um, Lauren was asked to leave the summer camp due to her drug use. In September of 2010, nine months before Lauren disappeared, she was actually arrested on charges of public intoxication and illegal consumption. And after she disappeared, the police reportedly found a small bag of cocaine in her room. Jay Rosenbaum told the police that she drank, snorted cocaine, and also snorted crushed up clonopin tablets the night that she went missing. WebMD says that clonopin is used to treat things like seizures, panic disorder, and anxiety. It can cause things like paranoia and it may impair your memory and your judgment along with a myriad of other things. Those are all potential side effects of clonopin, according to WebMD. Lauren also had a rare heart condition called long QT syndrome, which is a heart rhythm condition that can possibly cause fast and chaotic heartbeats, according to the Mayo Clinic website. Police also looked into rumors of a potential overdose and the possibility of disposing of her body to avoid criminal charges. Bo Didel was a private investigator that was hired by Lauren Spears' family, and he said that he's actually very doubtful, he's highly doubtful, that an accidental overdose would be sufficient enough for someone to get rid of Lauren's body. He said that drug use is actually a pretty prevalent thing at the university. And this is a quote from him, and it said, every kid's buying pot, cocaine, drinking, pills, he said. I mean, it's all over the place. So that really can't be the motive behind it. The police have also not ruled out the possibility of an abduction. However, Lauren's family, they don't think that she was abducted by a stranger. Lauren's parents actually went on to file a civil lawsuit against Michael Beth, Jay Rosenbaum, and Corey Rossman due to their involvement leading up to Lauren's disappearance. The group of boys, the group of men, are accused of negligence, stating that they gave her alcohol even though she was already very well intoxicated, and that they then neglected to make sure that Lauren got safely home. And that is likely what led to her death, is what they're all kind of, um, kind of trying to encase in this civil lawsuit brought forth from Lauren's family. Lauren's family said that they were hopeful that by bringing forth a civil lawsuit, the guys that she was hanging out with that night would be more forthcoming about details that maybe they hadn't told anybody else about the night that Lauren disappeared. In 2013, Tanya Walton Pratt was a federal judge and she actually dismissed the lawsuit against Michael Beth after it was determined that he had no duty of care or basically that he wasn't legally obligated to take care of Lauren. In 2014, the suit was actually dismissed against the other two men as well. And there was another quote that said, there could be any number of theories as to what happened to Lauren and what, if any, injuries she may have sustained. Without evidence to prove these theories, it would be impossible for a jury to determine if whatever happened to Spearer was a natural and probable consequence of her intoxication without any other intervening acts that would break the casual chain. Lauren's parents actually appealed the dismissal, but it was upheld in 2015. Their lawyers have said that the guys have been more than forthcoming with what they know, 
They have been very cooperative with the police, like beyond cooperative. They've taken many lie detector tests and none of the men that Lauren was friends with and last saw her that night or um, that she was hanging out with that night have been named as suspects in Lauren's disappearance. If you do have any information regarding Lauren Spears disappearance, please reach out to your local law enforcement agency, the FBI, or the Bloomington, Indiana Police Department at 812-339-4477. Of course, I'd like to know what you guys think about this story in the comments below. I would love to know what you think. I do ask that you remain respectful. You never know who might see these videos. Um, and let's hope and pray, if you are a praying person, of course, um, for answers in Lord's disappearance as well as the other people that recovered. Um, and hopefully more information will come out and hopefully one day we will know what happened to Lauren Spear as well as the other people in our videos that we've talked about. Once again, the phone number for the Bloomington, Indiana Police Department, 812-339-4477. And I'll see you guys in my next video. The next video we are gonna be talking about a case in Iowa. It's gonna be about Jody Hoos and Truett. Um, so anyway, stay tuned and I'll see you guys on Saturday. Thanks for watching.